However, uh, my problem was with the um, with that particular portion of it and the pressure it was going to put on businesses. Most of that problem was fixed in, in with the uh, Senate uh, agreeing to an amendment to that particular portion of the bill. Uh, it's really tough on, on businesses at this time of year. January, February is when they're doing not only their quarterly reports for, for reporting their taxes, but also they have to do the W-2s to all their employees uh, by January 31st. By February 28th, they have to do all their 1099s. It's a lot of reporting, and my fear was if you change that uh, circular on how they report stuff and collect taxes, which was what was going to happen in the Senate bill, then it was going to be a nightmare. It was absolutely unworkable, and many, many businesses, the 6 million small businesses across the country, all said that. Uh, that change, they changed the worst, the most egregious part of the bill, which was that, that portion. So uh, how do, especially when you're getting home and talking to people, how do the optics of all of this uh, look to you, and do you think that change was worth all of the political um, reporting headaches, et cetera, that the particularly House GOP faced this week? Well, in my, in my position was all along that that was the problem in the bill. I would have rather it been also extended to three months and not two, which would have moved a much of the, of the uh, uh, consternation into the next quarter, which would have been much better, easier to handle because of that year-end paperwork that businesses have to do. I know my own business, 50 years, three generations, uh, uh, we've, we've fill those forms out, and it's, it's not the easiest thing. I, I asked in the Rules Committee when this was being heard uh, if anyone there had filled out one, and there wasn't any takers. Uh, be, and so they did, I think uh, the senators didn't understand, but now with this fix, I think it's much, much better. So uh, that fix worth, again, the political pain this week? Uh, yes, oh, yes, for sure. Uh, that I, I, Like I said, I wish it would have been more, but to get that concession was huge. When you come back, because it's just a two-month extension, there remains the, the largest question of all. It's how is the, are these multiple provisions, the Medicare doc fix, the extension, how are they paid for? Well, I think that was the other good <laughs> concession. Uh, I, I felt very strongly that we should have done it for a year and that there should be um, an, an offset for, for that. However, uh, I think the... The Senate also agreeing to appoint conferees right away will help that in that we can begin discussions right, uh, you know, immediately. And in doing that, I think we can come to a conclusion. They had a way to pay for theirs. We had, we certainly had one to pay the way we wanted to pay for the year-long um, uh, extension and the two doc fix. Um, you know, and it'll just be a matter of negotiating. But those two ways are very far apart, and we're two months closer to the election. So how optimistic are you that a deal can be reached? <laughs> well, there, there's only lasted. For, the reason they're far apart is because there's, there, theirs would only pay for two months, and ours would pay for, in the doc fix, two years, and the uh, extension of the, of the um, tax holiday would have paid for a full year. So that's why they're so far apart and they're going to have to negotiate. If they want to have, as they've said, a full year, then they're going to have to come up with a way to pay for it. Okay, a couple quick questions as we close out here, and thanks for giving us your time this morning. Uh, your leadership, we're starting to read analysis piece about this being something of um, a, a real challenge for Mr. Boehner's speakership. How do you see it from inside the conference? Uh, I, I just see we're, we're in a, he's in a difficult spot. I mean, and I think we've said that all along. We can we control, in a sense, uh, one third of of, uh, of of the government process, and it's just a little over a majority of that one third. So it's not the easiest thing to do um, to um, come up with proposals. Send them like we've done. We sent many, many, many proposals down to the Senate, and nothing happens. All of a sudden, they act on one. I, you know, I, I believe that uh, he's done a, an admirable job, given the um, given the current situation of of a Senate who rarely responds to what the House does, rarely takes a position on an issue. Um, in this particular case, even if we looked at it, they didn't ever pass a bill. They did have an amendment to one of our bills, but that was about it. And so it makes it hard. Uh, I think uh, these these are things that uh, are difficult, and I think he's doing a great job in uh, balancing out what he has to do. And last, and I realize that a couple weeks at home might change perspective, but can you give us a sense of what 
the discussion is like inside the GOP freshman class. Your, your group of members, uh, are you feeling, uh, well, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. How, how are, what's the majority opinion there? Well, that's a great question. I, I don't know. I, I, would, I would say that, um, you know, they're, they're, the discussion is ongoing. However, it's not like we're calling each other every day. So um, I believe for the most part people have resigned themselves that this is the best we could do with what we have. And that was one of the emails I saw last night. But uh, as far as the overall class, uh, everybody's been disappointed. I, w I would assume that the, uh, the, the president and the center are disappointed that they're going to have to build a pipeline they didn't want to build, and they're going to have to create jobs they probably didn't want to create. And uh, same for us. We're having to uh, not get a year-long extension on a tax uh, holiday that we had hoped for. Congressman Daniel Webster, freshman member of the House of Representatives, representing Florida's 8th District. Thank you very much for giving us your uh, views on the deal reached last night and announced here in Washington. Thank you. Have a good holiday, sir. Thanks. You too. Well, let's get back to your telephone calls. Next up is a call from Weston, West Virginia. Gerald is a Republican there. Good morning.